singing over there on the side. What can I say? What can I do? And I was like, we were singing, like repeating it. And I said, I know what we can sing. We can go to that fiery chorus right after it. And I wasn't sure if Pat was going to take us there. And then he took us there. And I'm like, I'll stand with her. And I don't even know the words. It's not a man. You know those singers out there at karaoke, just mumbling the words. But at least they can hit the notes. And it's so amazing that out of the... 7.6 7.6 billion people that are on this earth, when you sing, God knows it's you. That your voice is such a unique thing. There is no other voice that is yours. It's uniquely your own. So when you sing, when you burst out in song, and you're making a joyful noise, because like me, maybe we can't hit all the notes, God loves when you sing. So worship all the more. It's an amazing time to do corporate worship together. We're standing together, amen, in a brand new series entitled Stand. And uh, this, this week I couldn't stand but watch a comedy special. Uh, it wasn't on Netflix, it was on public television with two grumpy old men throwing shade at each other for 90 minutes long. And they also titled it A Presidential Debate. And I'm watching this thing like go on and on and on. And it was really just to me funny towards the end when one of them got flustered and said, oh, shut up, man. And they were just going back and forth, back and forth, because both of them were standing on the premise that what they were saying was absolutely true. And you could sit back and try to analyze what they were saying and fact check and Google search to make sure that what they were saying was accurate. And sometimes you would scratch your head like, is that even true? What they're saying, is that the absolute truth? But to them, they believe wholeheartedly that they were standing on their version of the truth. I tried to pick up a new hobby as my gym has been closed. Any jujitsu practitioners out there that we can't go into those types of settings anymore because of social distancing guidelines. So instead, I picked up a beater long board and tried my hand at doing some old man surfing. And so I grabbed that beater board and my middle son saw me leaving the house and he said, Dad, Do you even surf, bro? And I said, I'm gonna try my best. And I got out there, paddled just a little bit, and I would find myself tumbling over and over again, trying to stand up on this longboard that is meant for for someone that's a buck 50, not 200 plus pounds that I carry on my shoulders. Until I bumped into a buddy that actually comes to our church, and we were surfing out there. He says, your eyes are focused on your board, your eyes are looking down. So where your eyes are going, you're gonna go. You need to keep your eyes up if you're going to stand. And we're in this amazing series called Stand. And of course, when I think of the Bible, I think of like water walkers, like Peter and Jesus walking on water and him defying the laws of gravity without a long board. By the word of the Lord, he was able to stand up outside of a boat and stand on the water by faith. And I think that's such an amazing picture of the word stand. How amazing that Jesus was standing with him and the comfort it was knowing that the savior of the world, if I were to mess up, slip up, or have my eyes down and sink, that he would reach out his hand because he loves me so much and grab me from drowning in the situation that I am. That was a good amen. But the question I want to submit to you today, this evening, is what happens when we don't stand on water, but we need to stand in the fire? When we need to stand in a place where it doesn't look like sweet Jesus is right there with us. What happens when we need to stand in, I've entitled it this evening, the wild Fire. So if you have your Bible today, let's dive on in to these amazing stories of some young warriors that stood up to the president of the day. Daniel chapter 3, starting in verse 13. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar. If you're having a struggle speaking in your heavenly language, you can just say Nebuchadnezzar like four times and you'll be all good. (laughs) Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought forward. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, and I preached this this morning at a drive-in service, so we had like 100 plus cars honking and horny and honking, all that good stuff. I did like hashtag honkies for Jesus. Pipe. Lyrie, Trigon, I've never heard of these instruments, but maybe you have. It might have been in your orchestra. A harp, the Roddy Roddy Piper bagpipes, and every kind of music. When you hear these sounds, when you hear those sounds that come on, I almost said like this Cardi B nasty song. When you hear these songs, drop down, bow down immediately, and worship me. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a comfortable AC car or uh, auditorium like this. No, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. It was the level of the hottest emu, if you know what that is, when you put the amazing pua'a in the emu or for my Samoan peeps, the umu. It's the hot fiery furnace that as people were trying to prepare it, it was so hot, the preparers died and they didn't even go into the fiery furnace. And who is the question he delivered to them in this fiery wild debate? Who is the God who will deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, And some translation says, but even if he doesn't, there's even a song from Hill songs that came out. But even if he doesn't, I'll still praise you. I will not bow down to the golden image that you have set up. For it says in the word of God that we will worship him only. They were standing not on worldly truths. They were not standing on what the world regulated to have this type of worship. When the music started to play, that was the absolute truth in the mind of King Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't clap back with some worldly, fleshly, angry assault. They came back with the word of God. Our God is bigger. Our God is greater. Our God is able to handle whatever you will throw at our way. And they didn't have to go into some type of emotional appeal to King Nebuchadnezzar. They stood on the word of truth and was able to share with him what absolute godly truth looks like. The world is looking for people that will do the same. They were looking for people that will share God's truth, God's word, even if it defies popular opinion, even if they do make fun of you at your job, even if they do make fun of you in your school, even if they do throw shade at you, you're going to give them a fiery word of God that eventually will put a seed in them, will produce fruit and fruit that will remain. Amen. How did they get this courage in order to go and face King Nebuchadnezzar? Point number one, they got this courage by having a wildfire of devotion to God. And when you do have that courage, point number one, you need to guard that courage. The word courage by root talks about taking care of the matters of the heart. Above all else, take care of the matters of the heart because if you lose courage, if you lose a sense of courage, you start getting weak at the knees. 
like SWV style. You start singing that song. I don't want to sing it for you. I can't hit that high notes like good old 90s R&B. You start getting weak at the knees. What he was trying to do was take shots at their courage. Like, I'm going to give you this opportunity. You don't have to go into the fiery furnace. You just need to bow down. You just need to sing. You just need to worship me. And they're like, no, we're not going to play that role. We're not going to play that game. We're not going to dance that dance. We strum to another song. We, we rock our beat to another beat. This is not what we do. We go and we operate out of a different set of standards. When I was a kid, <clears throat> like many kids growing up in the 90s, I know I'm older, <clears throat> When I was a kid, we didn't have like basketball year round, football year round. We played seasonal sports. So in the fall, everybody played soccer. And I had my shin guards, my short shorts, and my, my jersey that said AYSO right by the pictorial over here. And in between a doubleheader game, just six years old, I wandered over to the marsh that was right by our soccer field on the windward side of Oahu. And I started to notice in the little murky water, there were these little tiny fish, these little tiny fish that were all black. And no one told me that those weren't little tiny fish. So I got closer and closer to investigate and inspect what was in the water. It's like, oh, they look so cute. They're just swimming. And I wanted to grab me one of them because they're right at the surface. And little did I know my footing was off and I fell straight into a marsh pond that was infested with tadpoles this big and little frogs this big and their older cousins that were this big and their uncles and their auntie toad friends were all climbing through my shin guards, going through my shorts and the tidy whities and on my, on my jersey. And I developed a healthy fear of demonic frogs. <laughs> Daddy would say, take out the garbage. And in my household, if my dad said something, you don't even say no, you just do it. But I knew what was lurking in the cut outside. I knew what was in the grass. They always like, why do they chill right by the garbage can in the evening? And they just want to hop on your feet and do their little thing. And I'm so much bigger than them. But they put me in a place where I was frozen every time because this little thing, this experience had zapped my Courage, a little frog, a little thing that starts off like a tadpole. So when I heard this story of the frog in the pot, and I'm sorry, I'm giving you all kinds of different things. Just stay with me. I got a point. You put a frog in a pot of water, lukewarm. It won't hop out, but crank up the heat a little bit, just a little degree upward, and it gets a little warm, doesn't hop out it acclimates to the temperature increase. And then you increase the heat a little bit more, it acclimates to that temperature. And it gets a little hotter and hotter until the little bubbly start to bubble and it's about to get to a boil. And then red alert, red alert goes off. It's a little tiny demonic brain of a frog. It's time to jump out. It's time to jump out, but it zapped its energy from all the times it was acclimating at different levels of when the water was going higher and higher and it should have jumped out, but it was so stubborn. It was so thinking about, I can handle, I can take on the situation all by myself. I don't need my grace group brother. I don't need my grace group sister. I don't need my small group. I know we changed the words, but I don't need my, I don't need the people. I got me, my Bible, myself, and I'm gonna walk this walk and I got these fires. I'm going through this stuff, but I can handle, I can take it. And then all of a sudden, when when you reach a boiling point, you don't realize that you done got cooked. And now you're roasted, literally roasted. And that frog could have immediately got out if it had the right safeguards and he was guarded by other wart infested frog brothers. <laughs> we need that person that shares truth and love, encouragement and wisdom. And the tough things that you don't want to hear at times, it's the one that's going to save you. The enemy blow is not the one that you see coming. It's always the one that you don't see coming. The one that you don't anticipate. When you get into a sticky situation, a boiling pot situation, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into a moment, a literal fiery moment, 
where the president of the United States of Babylon was about to throw them into a fiery pit if, and they didn't go into the presidential debate all by themselves. They had their brother standing on the left. They had their brother standing on the right. And I bet if it was like Shadralani and Michelle would, they would have their sister standing on the left, their sister standing. Let's give it up for the women that they, they don't always get the most love in the Bible over here. But you get the story. The frog needed other frog brothers to tell him, hey, warning, it's, you, you're in a bad situation. I love that we have a church that's set up in a way that you don't have to fail. You don't have to fail. You can make mistakes. You don't ultimately have to do those like ugly, like, oh, like ugly fall, ugly fail that affects a whole bunch of people that you're around and all the people that you witness. You don't have to go down that road if you open up to brothers and sisters that can help you guard your courage. Is that good? Is that good stuff? The second thing they did after they guarded their courage, they grew by exercising their faith. I want to encourage you, grow and exercise your faith. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, all the instruments and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into the fiery furnace. This is a pretty big moment in Bible story history. This is a very, very iconic story. If some of you are here for the first time, and this is kind of new to you, this is a really good one. I Google it, YouTube, there's different clips that you can watch to get a sense of this story. For those of you that heard it before, I'm gonna throw gems at you that come from different angles. This is an iconic story of a major moment in history where three young warriors stood up to the president of the day, the king of the day, and defied what he said based on the word of truth. But you don't get to those moments that are ginormous. You don't get to those big defining moments without going through exercises of faith while no one was looking, while no one was looking, while no one was looking and laboring. They were standing in their schoolyard, being the ones that looked different than everybody else. Everybody was doing the WAP, and they say, we're not going to do that stupid dance, (laughs) even though it's trending. I said it. I didn't say the words. I know. That you know, let's not play. We know the song. (laughs) Instead of doing those things, we're going to dance for God. We're going to worship God. We're going to set ourselves apart. We're going to live differently. I don't know, Shadrach, Meshach. Abednego goes like, I like this dance. I just, (laughs) I want to do it. I want to learn it. No, 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 no. Let's be different. Let's be counterculture. And at a young age, They practice standing against the culture that told them to bow down and worship false idols, false gods. And they made a practice of exercising their faith, bullying upon bullying. If there was cyber bullying in the day, they would have got cyber bullying all to the maximum. But they decided to stand on the word of truth and exercise their faith while no one was looking so that when they were in a defining moment in front of the king, in front of everybody watching, where death was on the line, they were able to stand firm. Why do you go through trials? Why do you go through those experiences and you pray and you say, God, take me out of this thing? He said, no, I need you to experience this thing. I need you to experience this heartache. I need you to experience this loss. And I am with you every step of the way, but I'm developing something. I'm preparing something in you. And some of you are so angry at God because he didn't answer and he didn't say the prayer and you, he didn't do the microwave answer prayer in your time that you wanted and he didn't come through on your timetable and you got frustrated and you got flustered and you took it out on him but he's patient and he's loving and he's merciful and you make a decision to open up and allow him to heal those things, 
He's going to walk you through because he's preparing you for something. He's developing you for something. I remember showing up, 21 years old, 6 o'clock Sunday night service. It was the only evening service. And I think at the time at Pearlside, we had 2 in the morning. I would show up just mean mugging in the back, way in the back, arms crossed, looking at the Japanese guy with the glasses preaching (laughs) named Pastor Nakanishi and another guy that did the robot on stage. And I would just sit there with a cold heart and like, I prayed and it, it didn't work. Well, how, how long did you pray? Like f- five minutes. And you just get into that zone at that age. You just can't see what God is doing and, and God is developing. But you know what the trick was? Keep showing up. Keep showing up. Keep showing up. Keep zooming in or FaceTiming in. If you guys meet in person, keep showing up. God is developing and exercising something in you for a great purpose in the, some of you, in the very near future. At Kapolei, I have the privilege to serve alongside my beautiful wife. And I put a lot of things on her plate because I told her I ain't doing this thing without you. And we lead this thing together. And as much as they call me Pastor Wade, she pastors basically every single woman in our site at Kapole. And I give her these tasks at services to grab the microphone and to start to articulate a welcome, a greeting. Welcome to Pearlside Kapole. Thank you for joining us this morning. Love to, that you're here and if you want to know your next steps. I don't even know the whole script. She has memorized that. But she has spent a god-awful amount of hours in preparation for something that is not the most easy for most humans to do. In fact, if you do a quick Google search, don't do it right now. The number one fear next to death and the dentist is public speaking. Some of you guys, I love the dentist. (laughs) Not when you've had like four root canals. It's frogs and the dentist for me. And she does these welcomes that might seem just like, oh, an ordinary task. For me, it's not too difficult because I've I've done it a gazillion times. And it was awful when Sean was in our youth ministry and I try to do my little thing and they're just like these kids looking at me. But I developed something in those times by doing just like a simple little welcome. I'm putting her in these situations because as much as she's good on a micro level with women in small groups, I see her rocking stages, empowering women at these conferences. And you can't get to these mega moments that are on a macro level without, without going through small little fires, going through small little situations. So I put her in these things to get her ready for a message she's about to preach. And the next time they ask me to do something here on a six o'clock night, I'm gonna share this thing with her. And she's gonna give you something that I can't articulate because God does something different and unique in and through her and you'll be blessed. She's pretty good at what she does. But there's something that she needs to go through now to prepare her for something down the line that is coming around the corner. You know what happens? We like to skip steps. We like to skip the process. Especially you've been in church for a while and you watch your your leaders do their thing. Some of you just have this desire to be a full-time minister. God bless you. And you want to be here, but God wants you to do the stuff here. It's here that makes that stuff. I've seen too many leaders that do there, and then they fall because they didn't develop and exercise their faith in this season. Some of you guys are praying, God, take me out of this season. Take me out of this season. I can't, I can't stand another click of the, the stove. Take me out of this place. God says, no. I'm with you right there. We're cooking together and we're getting ready for what I want to take you through in the next chapter of your life. Next. As you exercise your faith, we can't get focused on where God is taking you. We want to get focused on what God is doing right now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, 
our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have easily appealed to the king based on their past experiences. Like, King Nebuchadnezzar, don't you remember all of the things that we organize in your presidential cabinet so that you can function in the society and all the different provinces were taking care because of all the things that we did and we organized for you. Don't you remember all the chaos that happened and we brought peace and we brought unity. They could have easily appealed to the King Nebuchadnezzar to get them out of that fiery situation, but they did not. They could have easily appealed to God God, we have kept your commands since we were yay big swimming in frog-infested waters. We have kept your commands all of these years. Why would you allow us to get cooked in a fiery furnace? They could have easily appealed. You can easily get sucked into that mindset of saying, God, after all the things that I did showing up to church and inviting a friend and doing all of these things to advance your kingdom, why would you put me through this situation? Why would you not answer this prayer that I'm asking you to deliver for me? It says it in your word that if you would believe in your heart and then it would happen, it's going to happen like that. They could have easily done so, but they had the right perspective. They had the word of truth on the inside. The fact of the matter is God could do it. And even if he doesn't, we're still not going to worship what you want us to worship. And throughout history, we know there are people that bow down to less. And here they are at their defining moment. And they didn't even realize how much of a mega moment it was going to be. And so they didn't bow down. They're arrested. They're walking together. I don't know why they walk like penguins, but they did. And they were walking to the fiery furnace, and it was so hot. The, the king was so upset. He cranked up the heat a little bit more. Their hairs on their arms started to get singed, like when you try to get the perfect s'more at a campfire and you just get a little close to the fire. They were like 10 yards away, and they could just feel the heat, and they're walking closer and closer. And that moment where the reality of their death is coming, they could have easily been like, God, what is going on? Where are you? I've heard stories from my granddad and my great granddad about your deliverance. I could use some deliverance right about now. And they're walking closer to the fiery furnace. And then they get shoved on in. And then they start to realize, look, people were dying when they were near the furnace. And we're alive. We're breathing. And the heart is still beating. And then they start, like what Pat was saying, they just started to, they started to, <laughs> they started to dance with it. They started to groove. And like, Shadrach, what song should we sing? Your fire burns within me. I thought it was an appropriate song because they were in the fire. Your fire burns within me, burns within me with your fire. And people that were looking in the fiery furnace were looking for what the truth was supposed to be, three dead humans. Nebuchadnezzar. Are they dead? Nope, they're not dead. They're dancing and they're singing. Your fire burns with it. Hold up. They're not by themselves. There is another in the fire. Standing, you can clap. Standing next to me. There was another in the water. Holding back the sea. And they're just grooving. In the fiery furnace, not just Shadrach, not just Meshach, not just Abednego, but Jesus himself decided to take a trip early to earth and start hanging with and protecting the ones that had a wildfire of devotion on the inside that no matter what circumstance they're in, they're not going to bow down. No matter what fiery flame was thrown at from King Nebuchadnezzar, real live flames because they had the 
wildfire of God on the inside, they were able to stand. Isn't God faithful? Isn't God so faithful that when you think it's over, it ain't over till he says it's over. And I'll wrap up this with this last point as the worship team comes, that our God, point number four, is so faithful. He is so faithful. Even if you think, oh my, I felt stranded. I felt all by myself. I felt stranded. That's why you need your brother or your sister that will stand next to you when you feel stranded. You need a three-stranded cord to intertwine with your life so that you can withstand the fiery trials that has been set up by the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy your life. But we serve a God that doesn't leave us out to dry, doesn't leave us hanging. As long as we hang with our brothers shoulder to shoulder, as iron sharpens iron, so one woman or man sharpens another person. This series is going to be a good one. This is going to be a really awesome one for your faith and development to know how to stand.